The Jags are hot, man, and they go to Kansas City this week. But today we're going to play a little What If Tuesday. What If Tuesday here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining me here on Locked On Jaguars. I am Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars Daily Podcast, where it is your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen. I would like to also inform you that we are free on all platforms, wherever you get your podcast, you will get it without charge. That's right. Make sure you tap in wherever you get your podcast on whatever platform that may be. And also, like and subscribe to the locked on jaguars youtube page today's episode of locked on jaguars is presented by prize picks prize picks is daily fantasy made easy pick two to five players and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry first time users can receive a 100 instant deposit match when you use the promo code locked on that's prizepicks.com promo code locked on what is happening people as we are here in divisional round week it feels and sounds so good to say that because we are not used to saying it if you're a jaguar fan we have not been in this neck of the woods too many times however in the past just about every time we have been to these neck of the woods we advanced to the championship game. It, it's happened three times in the Jaguars' history. They were underdogs every single time, just like they will be underdogs this week. So what I'm going to ask you in the first segment is, what if they actually win it? And by it, I ain't just talking about Kansas City. I'm talking about either Buffalo or Cincinnati the week after that, and then they go to the Super Bowl and win that too. Man! We would lose our natural mind. I'll tell you, I'm going to get your hype for that by going through those different scenarios and those different feelings and what it would mean. Worst to first, as well as Doug Peterson becoming the first guy to win two Super Bowls, one in one in both, one in more than one place. Nobody's ever done that. Um, segment two, a lot of talk about Walker Little playing well, which he has, and what it means for the future. And why Juwan Taylor keeps catching drive-by shrapnel as if what Walker Little and them doing has something to do with him and what his value is to the team. I'll discuss that. Segment three, I'm going to have some fun with you. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I said on the postcast Sunday that what I would do is talk about some holes that the Jaguars have. But then I I pulled back on that a little bit because I said nobody want to talk about the offseason and no holes they, because they want this team to win. So right here on the same podcast, I'm going to say what happens if they win the Super Bowl. And then in segment three, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually talk about how they need to improve, but I'm going to do it in a different way. I'm going to say what if, I'm going to tell you, what if Trevor Lawrence, if somehow we could jump in the time machine and he was the – quarterback in 2017 when they had that great defense so that'll allow you to start understanding now that while we are rooting for them to to play out of their minds and win the whole thing this year they can actually improve and still get better because it's going to be incumbent on the front office to make sure that they independently look at every single scenario to try to improve and don't get caught up in just saying hey we want it we're good enough the way we are um let's get to it what if the jaguars make it to the Super Bowl and win it. Well, first of all, if they win it, Doug Peterson, as I said, would become the first coach to win Super Bowl in two different places as the head coach. Because I know everybody was sitting out there talking about Tom Conflin. They were sitting there saying, well, Conflin did it. He was wide receivers coach with the Giants, and he went back. Well, actually, he didn't do it because both all of his championships came with the same team. Belichick did it as the defense coordinator for the Giants, but we're talking head coaches. You see all the Super Bowl winning coaches that have switched teams and they may have gotten those teams to the playoffs, but they just didn't get over the hump. Dick Vermeil won 
in St. Louis, but he hadn't won in Philly before he got there. And then he didn't win. And Andy Reid didn't win in Philly, but he won in Kansas City. So Doug would become the first coach to do that. Um, it would also be 30 and 30 material for the Jaguars. You would have to. You would have to see somebody do a documentary on not just going from worst to first, having the first pick to being a Super Bowl champion. It would have to be, you would have to include 2021 coming off of COVID and they hired King Joffrey. He kicked the, he kicked the guy and he stayed up there and felt up on some girl at a bar and nobody liked him, right? It was like Captain Ahab, right? And to, to remove that cancer, and very seldom do we talk about a leader this way, a person in a leadership position, at least in sports, when you're talking about politics. Very seldom do we, we always talk about removing people like when they, remember when the Jaguars, a lot of y'all don't, but they, when they removed Andre Risen and elevated Jimmy Smith and Jalen Ramsey was traded. And you always hear people talk about what it's like to, to snatch the, the, the thing that has the attitude out and everything gets better. But it's never like a coach, the guy who's actually supposed to be cultivating said culture. But that's exactly what happened. So it, it might be a 30 for 30, even if they don't win this week. The fact that they have gone this far and how it's flipped and changed everything. This goes to show you that people that always talk about the best of the best and talk, 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 talk. Watch them. I like people that do stuff. Don't talk, 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 we coming. We all that. No, I want to see what you do. And Doug Peterson is a doer. And can I get that on a shirt? Doug Peterson is a doer. I got an idea. But in any event, in any event, do not let people make you think that this football team does not have a chance to go in the arrowhead and win. Don't. Don't put any ceilings on yourself or your or any limits on yourself. We're not sitting here. I, I'm doing this for a reason. It's like, wait, you're jumping the gun. No, I'm not jumping the gun because I've heard a little bit of the, and, and I had a, a, a Twitter going back and forth the other night with a fan who I, I really do like the guy, but I was, in, in this job, I was, I was basically Saturday night trying to keep people optimistic. I was being realistic, but I really did like if the Jaguars just, if they, reversed the first half that they could come back and win the game. And that's exactly what they did outside of the turnovers, but they just scored on every possession. As long as I see a, a path, even if it's a difficult one, I'm going to always hold out hope and be optimistic. So I had a fan sitting here saying, well, at least they got to this point. And I'm never the guy to be satisfied. I, you, you, you'll have time to reflect when the game is over. You'll have time to clap your hands and say, we were playing with house money. We didn't expect to get this far or at least our future. You'll have to know the future is right now. If there's a chance you can, you can win still, as long as that clock is to, right now. That's why I wouldn't do that. And I think Buddy got mad at me because he says I need to own my whatever, but own my stuff. But it, it wasn't. I'm trying to always think about the positivity that comes along with the what if factor because I always leave room for supernatural things to happen and that's and the reward is so good when you do that and that's exactly what happened Saturday night. It's exactly what happened the Saturday before that. That's it. So that's why we're doing this for positivity because we're setting ourselves up here to get to the point where no y'all might have, want to forget about Jalen but hey we're going up here and we're going to win that that's the attitude that I think these young guys need to have and I and I and I think they got a shot I, I really do think they got a shot so much talk about good things these are good conversations to have by the way so much talk about um the offensive line play and that talk is about everything that's positive 
about that offensive line, right? Like, it's not really a problem when you have too many people who can who can play at those positions. Those are not too many problems. So there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of shrapnel going around about somebody, and I want to put a little bit of an end to that, and I'll do that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. After I let you know that today's show is sponsored and brought to you by Prize Picks. All right. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy game that's between you and Prize Picks. And you don't have to worry about your 11 buddies going against you. It's just one on one. You and Prize Picks because they have entries, which is players and projections placed on those players. And you have to decide if they're right and say whether it's more or less. I'm going to tell you right now, I love the game format because. It just gives you, you know what the number is, and you're either going to be right or wrong, and you don't have, there's no, there ain't going to be no push. There ain't going to be none of that. You're either going to get it or you're not. And it's just up to you, and it's not up to anybody else. So I love that. And I'm telling you right now, whatever they say uh, Trevor Lawrence's touchdowns are going to be, I'm going to go more because I think he's going to have a big game this week. Here's how it works. You pick two to five players, and if they go and score more or less than their prize pick projection, and it matches up what you said, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less, and it's that easy, and the deposits are safe and fast, and they're currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Picks app and go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, you'll get $50. It's on your initial first-time uh, sign-up. Don't forget to enter the promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. We thank you for joining here again on Locked On Jaguars, making us. Your first listen. I love saying that because it's so true. So many people often say first listen when they see me in public, and I really, really do appreciate that. Subscribe to Locked On NFL your as a podcast and get daily conversations on the biggest stories plus in-depth analysis on the biggest games with NFL key predictions every Friday and Monday, local insiders cover the weekend with game-to-game -game episodes. Locked on NFL is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Your, yours truly is happen, happens to be a co-host on the Wednesday show, so make sure you tap in and make that your second listen. We're on our second topic for today, and our second topic is all about offensive line play. It is all about offensive line play. Walker Little has played lights out. Now, a little housekeeping. I had to trade that line. I said they ought to trade him, right? To be fair to me, at the beginning of the year, in the offseason, I said they ought to trade Cam Robinson, tag him and trade him, and put Walker Little, throw him in the fire, hope he's ready. And if they don't, then if he's not, draft somebody or have or get a get a veteran, a Kelvin Beecham-ish veteran who can play until he was ready, somebody you didn't have to pay a whole bunch of money. The Jags chose to – uh, extend Cam Robinson for three years. I believe his contract is three years, 50 some odd million dollars. So trading him creates a dead cap issue that you don't want. Cam Robinson got hurt at some point. Uh, it's not a devastating injury, but now in steps Walker Little, lights out, does well. So that's never a problem, right? That you have two players who are very, very extreme and extremely conf uh, competent at a critical position. I think Walker Little has a bit, bit more upside. I think we've seen the best of Cam Robinson, which is fine. It's it's what Cam Robinson is. He has the ability of a dude that's going to play for 10 years, and he can only get smarter as he gets a little bit older. So while we physically may have seen him at his best, those that veteran stuff kicks in, and he's going to have a, a lot of extreme value. Cam has only played left tackle. He told me that. I said, I asked him, this is three or four years ago, I asked him, have you ever played anything except left tackle? Let me show you exactly what he did. He was drinking some water. He went, nope. So he said it just like that, as a matter of fact. So that's about his willingness to do it. It also comes across as if he's never done it at any other position, do we know he's any good at it, right? Walker Little has played both left and right tackle. 
So here's the way most people, when they talk about this, they make this the solution. The solution to them is, well, Cam comes back, just move, walk a little over the right tackle, and Jawan Taylor's a free agent. Nah. You, uh, my friend Mike K told me that, and later on, if he does sign with somebody, which he will, the first day of free agency, you'll get a compensatory third-round pick for him. I understand the compensatory picks. I understand the third round pick is a solid pick. I understand that um, you can't pay everybody. But here's the part that I try to tell people about. Juwan Taylor can play. Juwan Taylor is a very, very good football player. When Juwan Taylor was drafted four years ago, he was 21 years old. Not even 21. He was 20. He was 20 years old. He was 24. Coming off of his best season. Why would you have any conversation about not re-signing Jawan Taylor? I wouldn't. And when teams say, well, they're cash-strapped or whatever, let me warn you again. It, it, teams... You know how people say when you always want to be busy, somebody always say they don't have time for you because they're working. And the old adage is people make time for who they want to make time for. Teams find money to pay people they want to pay. Ask the New Orleans Saints, and the Washington Commanders, Dallas Cowboys. They find money. Teams find money to pay people they want to keep. And in this world that we live in, 24-year-old, durable, tackles offensive linemen in this league that can really play you don't just let them walk unless you're at a stalemate the ravens were at one a few years back when they had orlando brown the problem with orlando brown is he a lot of people didn't think because of his profile that he was going to be a good left tackle and a lot of them were wrong because he is he is all world at left tackle right just because he doesn't he makes up for whatever you think about him athletically. He makes up for it with his size and with his technique. So there are no there are no dissenters when it comes to whether or not Jawan Taylor can play right tackle. He's a very good football player. And the Jaguars, with their history, we can forget that because we're having this little run now, but we can forget that they haven't really had a lot of players like him who they just let walk out the door and you shouldn't. And most teams don't have players like that. And we forget that it ain't like we've been overflowing with great talent around here. Right? So when you get a 24 year old guy who has four years of starting experience, there's no thought in my mind of letting him go. The only solution is not here. The solution here is not to make walk a little, your right tackle. The solution is you pay Juwan Taylor to play right tackle and you, you got Walker Little for two more years under contract. Maybe another year of Cam Robinson, and then you move Cam Robinson, and you ride with Walker Little and Jawan Taylor for the next six, seven years. Folks want to just move one of those guys over to right tackle. Neither one of them is better at right tackle than Jawan Taylor. They're not. I like, I like them both. Neither one of them is better at right tackle than Jawan Taylor. Jawan Taylor is not better than either one of them at left tackle. This is where we revisit that note from Cam Robinson and plant his butt at left guard if that's what makes you better. See if Walker Little can play left guard until Cam moves out and then you scoot him over to left tackle. I think they need a left guard. I like uh, Ben Barch, but no, you got to improve the team some kind of way and get – Put your five best guys on the field at the same time. And Doug, the communicator, Doug, the doer, can get it done. Coach Rafter knows whether those guys, what their skill sets are. You might be able to keep everybody, but I don't know why everybody all of a sudden just wants to give away Juwan Taylor's position. Because those two guys are over there because they chose to pay one guy and then the other guy has proved that he's better. That don't have nothing to do with that dude over there on the other side. Stop giving away his position because you can't figure out a way to work this out. All right, segment three. We're going to have some fun. Where Trevor Lawrence was on the 2017 Jaguars. I know y'all like, wait, why are you doing this? Because I want to, and it's my show, and this is what we are going to do. After I let you know that today's sponsor is 
betonline.net. That's right, betonline.net. You all know, man, that's where it's at. BetOnline is your number one source for all of your betting needs on sports. You get the info, the stats, and the news and analysis that you want. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer. They've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Now, I've been talking about the Brooklyn Nets for a minute. Y'all going to give me a break telling me they're on a losing streak. I know that, but KD got hurt. But KD will be back. So this is a chance for them to build the rest of their roster up to see if they can rebound and play some defense. What you need to do is head to the website today to use your mobile device to learn more. The reason why to do that is because Bet Online is where the game starts. And we know that you start here with me every single day, making us your first listen. And we appreciate it because it's your team every day, and that's what we do. Your second listen needs to be Locked On NFL. Subscribe to that podcast, the Locked On NFL podcast, and get daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories, plus in-depth analysis on the biggest games with NFL key predictions on Friday. And then Monday, the local insiders cover the weekend with game-to-game episodes. Locked on NFL, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, what if Trevor Lawrence was the quarterback in 2017? Y'all will have a Super Bowl by now. This ain't a shot at Blake Bortles. This ain't a shot at anybody. This is just showing you that that team was spectacular across the board, right? They just didn't have a guy like this because having someone like this makes so many things easier, right? And it elevates so many people and you're never out of a game. He can always throw you back into it, right? But with a defense, even though this defense has had their moments, but they play really well as of late, that defense was the best defense in the league. I'll give you an example. You saw a team the other night in Baltimore playing lights out, and I know folks used to talk about how much they're going to miss Wink Martindale, and Wink is doing a great job with the Giants. But the Ravens defense, whoever they hired, it, he, it's working now, and all they needed was a little bit better quarterback play and a, maybe some better play calling from Greg Roman, and they would have probably beat the Bengals. It's very rare that you get a, a defense like that and have a great quarterback at the same time. But when you do – I, I'm going I'm to venture to say this. I think they would have won it in 17 and 18. So why am I going through this? Because this is why I'm going through it. Even if they win it all, like we said in segment one, there's still some areas where they need to improve. And the only reason and the only way I can make some people understand exactly what that means, because everybody's so emotionally high right now, And you should be, and you should be optimistic, and you should think that this team is adequate and good enough to get that done because the quarterback makes it easier and the defense has played better. But what if you could line this great quarterback up with a defense like that one that was generational? That is when you you, you really start getting to the point where you expect a dynasty, right? So remember when they were going to draft Trevor Lawrence and I said, They got a chance to do something really, really special here. I expected him to do what he's doing now, maybe not quite this early, but I expected him to have confidence permeate through the entire fan base as well as the organization, right? But when I said they got to get everything else right and be greedy, I was looking at possibly building a team that was a dynasty, building a team offensively and defensively where there are playmakers all over the place. The hardest thing to do is to get a quarterback. You got it. It's settled for the next 12 to 15 years. Now what you have to do is you have to not get to the point where it's like, well, because having a quarterback solves most ills, we don't have to do everything else that we're supposed to do. to cultivate. No, we need to maximize everything, everything, leverage, everything get top compensation for everyone that we let go if we're going to trade them if you got a player on your team that's pretty good and there's a guy that's a little bit better sorry 
get the guy that's a little bit better. Don't fall in love, and fans do this, and some media people do it. They don't. They ain't going to fall in love. They're looking for improvement every day. And I've used the parenting to, to mention this before. I love my kids. I won't talk bad about my kids. Nobody ain't that much bad to say either. But if I'm going to describe some characteristics or some things that they can improve on, even myself, I know me and I know my family better than anybody, right? So do those coaches. They know what they can and can't do. They know what they hope somebody doesn't do to them. They know what they hope, how they hope somebody doesn't try to exploit player X, Y, Z. So they're going to be trying to get better in every single area. Whether you win or lose, you have to start over, take inventory of your team. So that's why I give you the example about what if Trevor was on that team with that defense. Because the reason I'm saying that is because that's what you should want this team to be next year. You should want to build a team. You should want to build a defense. You know, I ain't talking about the attitudes and all of that stuff, but that comes with it. But you should want to build and give. Tre See, I'm going to use Baltimore as an example. One of the criticisms of Baltimore is because they got Lamar Jackson. They don't think they need to improve their wide receivers. See? They should be getting great wide receivers, even though yeah, I think he's a better passer than people give him credit for. But just because a guy can make lemonade out of a bag of onions doesn't mean that he, if you gave him lemon, if you gave him lemons, guess what he might do? He might make the best lemonade ever. Just because somebody used potato skins to make tasty hooch in the bathtub doesn't mean that when you get money, you don't want to actually go to a real package store, right? So whenever I say the Jaguars have things to improve on, that's why I wanted to give you that what if scenario. Okay, you what do you mean improve wig? They're winning. Okay, yeah, okay, but what if Trevor Lawrence was on that on that team? So for the future, that's what you need to be trying to get to. Get to here, get here with me tomorrow. I think I'm gonna have a special little interview. I'm supposed to interview Solomon Wilcox, and hopefully that goes down the way it's supposed to. But whether or not that happens, we will be here tomorrow with another podcast here on Locked On Jaguars because it's your team every day. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time.